Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts, here to talk about somebody out there, one of you, who feels like God has forgotten all about you. Now, when I prayed and asked the Lord what to talk about, this is the scripture that popped in my head. It's so plain. And I believe God wants to talk to you and let you know how things have to process through life and that no answer does not mean not present. God is a very present help. So listen to this verse. And at the ninth hour, this is Mark chapter 15, 34. At the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice. This is why he was on the cross, saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabbathani. Yeah, you know, I don't know how to speak that language. This is what he said, which is being interpreted my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Well, you might be feeling the same thing. And the reason I say that is because I believe that God knows that somebody, I'm looking at you right now, <laughs> somebody, one of you is feeling like God has abandoned you in your in your dire, your most dire hour of need, in in your deepest hour of pain, and and in, in, in your deepest quandary, it's like where the heck is God in all this? I can't see it. Yeah, we've all pretty much all been there, done that, and if we haven't, we're getting it, getting ready to get into that. Everybody's going to have that experience, and it's not fun doesn't feel good, doesn't make you a happy camper. However, I want you to know God has not forsaken you. And I feel like God wants you to hear those words. I have not forsaken you, my child. I am right here with you. Do not be afraid. Do not despair. Though it's rough right now, I know what I'm doing. I am very much in control and I am mindful of you and what you are going through. And I will not let you crumble under the weight. But I'm, I am ca carrying out something. I feel like God is saying that he is trying to accomplish something. And I don't know whether it's in you or in the other people involved or in a situation that has to turn with the tide of time. And he, God works with the fullness of time. Time is a tool in his hand. And when he works with time, it's, it's a tool. It's something that he has to allow us to mark our time until God's fullness of time. And in the meantime, other things are happening that we can't see until after everything is said and done. You see this kitchen I see I sit in. You see this house I'm in. This is one of the fruits, the end results of going through one of those seasons of God, where are you? But I couldn't really say that because I saw him moving in different situations right in the nick of time. And um, I could see after the end result in retrospect, he was working with the timing of the market to be at rock bottom for me to, for me and my husband, my late husband, to be able to get a house for $68,000. Now that's undoable for 1,400 square foot home in California. Yeah, right. So the point I'm making is, God works with the fullness of time. When my husband was getting ready to pass away, we knew he was he was going. We knew I, the Lord had given me a vision and also given me a dream that he told me, baby, I'm so tired. I'm so tired. And, and we had a long talk. And uh, I, I want you to know that during that 30 days, it was literally 30 days 
three days after he was diagnosed with a brain tumor. And God had already shown me a vision that let me know it was his time. This wasn't a happenstance. But he had to do it in a way where Milton had time to share something that he had never told anybody. And he had to divulge it before the Lord could freely take, a, take him home. Five days, it was four or five days before he passed away. He confessed something to me that he had done when he was unsaved, like maybe 50 years prior. <laughs> but it was something that he that haunted him all his life, and it made it difficult for him to believe God wanted to heal him because of what he had done. Even though he knew he was forgiven and all that, that was that one thing. And God knows when there are barriers and there are things that need to be broken down, he knows how to break down that wall. And I just want to tell you, he's working something in and he's working something out. He's solving an issue. He's resolving. He's reconciling the past with the present. Whatever he is doing, know that he knows what he's doing. He has not forgotten you. He has not abandoned you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. There's a song I, I sing at church. It's one of my favorite songs. I've sung it a lot at prison ministry. And it's called He is Able. And the words are like this. Like peering through a window blurred with rain, emotions run together in a flood of doubt and pain, well, we prayed as best we can. We must leave it in his hands. Yet I know when my eyes fail to see, he is able. And even though it seems impossible to me, he is able. And if he chooses not to move in the way we prayed he would, I'm confident that he's working all together for my good. I will stand behind his word, for he is able. Questions seem to haunt us night and day, right? How could God allow my heart to be torn this way? Does he listen when I call? Is he even there at all? Yet I know when my eyes fail to see, he is able. And even though it seems impossible to me, he is able. And if he chooses not to move in the way you pray he would, be confident he's working all together for your good. You must stand behind his word for he is able. He is able. He is able. Don't you forget that. And no, he has not forsaken you. Neither will he ever leave you or forsake you. God bless you.